Oh, making videos is so hard with kids. What's up, sons? It's Playdride with Simon Tech once again, and today we have another talking head video. Today we're going to be talking about a Tether and basically trading being stopped with Tether or uh, involving Tether in New York. But before we get into it, I did want to address an issue that we had in the previous video regarding Nice Hash and EIP 1559. While the base argument remains true, that being, of course, that the profits are going to decrease based on the fact that Nice Hash primarily is renting out hash power for Ethereum, and that it is possible that Nice Hash could be manipulated to influence the decision of EIP 1559 based on which pool the renters decide to point the hash power at. I was incorrect in exactly how the batch file is generated. While it is generated by NiceHash and not by the user, specifically when we're talking about using something like the NiceHash QuickMiner and so on and so forth, it isn't true in the exact manner that I had actually related. So I need to clarify that. The batch file that is created by NiceHash uses a NiceHash proxy. And so basically the machine will go up to NiceHash and then through the proxy, Nice hash will disperse that hash power out to whatever pool the renters decide to rent it out to. In addition to that, you can use individual miners such as Phoenix Miner or T Rex Miner or whatever miner you like and configure that to not to then mine to the Nice Hash proxy. All right, so thanks in the comments for getting that cleared up. Anytime I make a mistake, I'll try to address it to the best of my ability so that we have as much transparency and the best communication we can get through. Obviously, it's very hard for me to go through comments. So I try, um, but you know, I'll try to get to it, all right? You can always tweet at me on Twitter as well if you find something disagreeable, so on and so forth. Again, too, if you disagree with anything, I am totally willing to have a discussion with you as long as it remains civil. So there you go. Okay, so let's get into this big news which is essentially the reason why the markets are down or one of the reasons, right? And that is because New York, New York Attorney General shuts down BitPhoenix and Tether trading in the state of New York. So the reason for this is Tether's claims that its virtual currency was fully backed by US dollars at all times was a lie. That is what the allegation is from the Attorney General, Letitia James. All right, so. Let's talk about this for a second. So what they are basically saying is that Tether does not have every token backed by a US dollar. And this could be true, but they could also still have a total cash value backing it, meaning they could have other assets, loans out, so on and so forth. What does this mean from an end user standpoint though? It means you should be cautious because anytime you start hearing that people are moving amount around money like that, you start thinking about corrupt hedge fund managers and so on and so forth, right? Uh, they could maybe have taken all of it and put it into Bitcoin to make a little bit of extra money. So technically they have the cash value, but it's not actually in the US dollar. This is problematic when we're talking about cryptocurrency though, because if the idea is eventually we want to have these tokenized assets, then the people managing these tokenized assets need to be upfront and transparent about it. Because if they aren't, then the users can never trust them and we never know if we actually have the money or not. And it goes against the principle of crypto in that manner, because if we're talking about cryptocurrency and the principle of Bitcoin, it is to remove trust from the system. So basically it's supposed to be quote, a peer-to-peer -peer trustless system. What is a trust? A trust is a bank, essentially. You could also say that it's a federal reserve and so on and so forth. So in the case of what Tether is compared to, of course, what Bitcoin's original goal was, they are in kind of uh, a weird state of maybe not agreement, right? Because at this point, if you are backing a token with a US dollar, then you are just by default going to be interacting with the Federal Reserve or the US Federal Reserve, right? Obviously clear cut point in case here, we have New York basically manipulating Tether, right? Or, or at least being able to interact with them on a legal basis because of the actual asset that is being tokenized, right? Which is the US dollar. 
This is also easy to see in other cryptocurrencies like XRP, a little bit of a different situation, but because of their work with traditional finance, such as banks and so on, the SEC can get involved a lot more easily and also can manipulate and control those types of currencies. So whenever you're looking at a currency from an investment standpoint and so on and so forth, you do want to go ahead and take a look and see, does it line up with Bitcoin and its original you know, ideas or does it not? And if it doesn't, then in my opinion, what I do, and this is not financial advice, it's just what I do because I want to adhere more closer to the principles or the original principles of Bitcoin, I won't uh, partake in that particular token or coin. I'll be like, okay, whatever. So I miss out on some good ones and I miss out on some good pumps, but I also am playing it a little safe in that manner too. I don't have to worry about it as much. Now, other versions of this, of course, is going to be like DAI and so on and so forth on like uh, the ERC-20, right? So you have your own stable coins in different aspects and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, because of the nature of crypto and where it's at right now, it is almost a necessary evil. So let's talk about that for a second. What I equate it to is essentially the Model T and the release of it. And at the time, there weren't gas stations everywhere and it wasn't very viable to just have a Model T and not have a horse anymore. You still needed a horse to tow along the Model T when it ran out of gas so you could get to the next gas station. It's similar and that's kind of how technology works when it's kind of new and, and kind of figuring itself out and still needs some advancements in certain portions of the technology, you're gonna get kind of pulled into previous technologies and still have their downsides. So what you end up having is like two downsides, right? And that's problematic. And I understand that we still have to have certain services that are to a certain extent a trust and that is not going to be avoidable until the technology can fully replace it in a viable manner so and by no means should you go to anybody and be like oh i'm so hardcore we can only trade from ledger to ledger or nano to nano or whatever it is right because it's not going to necessarily be viable at this point or in this state as it sits with blockchain as it becomes more and more viable we will be able to clearly see which which coins will rise to the top like Bitcoin and which coins will fall by the wayside and go the way of the dinosaur with, with traditional finance. So I hope this video is helpful and you guys kind of understand a little bit about what's going on and how I kind of view these types of articles. Once again, like I don't think this spells out anything terrible for cryptocurrency. I think it's just a very clear cut case of what happens when a cryptocurrency tries to interact with traditional finance. I'll see you next Tuesday.